Hi everyone, welcome back. An unusual start to uh, this update. Uh, I just thought I'd show you Ron's back garden. This is where he brings the dahlias, the dahlia tubers at the end of the season and uh, he prepares them in his large greenhouse there, dries them off, dusts them in uh, sulphur powder and uh, then stores them in uh, boxes that he's uh, made specially for that purpose. Um, but he's also got rather a nice uh, back garden as well. He's really into his uh, bedded flowers, his bedding plants, and he sows all these each year, uh, both for his own garden and for those of friends and, and family. And uh, this area here actually is what he used to describe as his allotment. He had an allotment about 30, 40 years ago and it was ruined by irrigation works that the, the then local authority undertook and uh, they churned all the clay up on his plot so he, he abandoned it, handed his keys back. Um, and then for the next 20 years or so, he grew all his vegetables here at the bottom of his garden. But over the last six years, this area has now returned well and truly to being a, a flower bed and he's got all, all manner of the bedding plants and he's got cosmos, he's got some dahlias in here as well as you can see just to the right of the tree there but it really is a, a lovely display of flowers and I, uh, I thought it might be worth just showing you this so that you can see uh, a little bit more of the uh, flower handyman's work We'll take a look at uh, the flowers from another angle. Morning everyone. Well, just had another hot and sticky night, haven't we? And uh, it promises to be the hottest day of the year, possibly the hottest day on record today. It's Thursday and uh, I came down the allotment just a little before 8 and it was already about 26 degrees. I've watered the dahlias and the greenhouses and uh, it's now getting on for 9 o'clock. Had a sweep round as well because the birds had made a mess but uh, I'm ready for my uh, first cup of tea. Uh, but before I have that I just thought I'd show you the area between the greenhouses on the top two allotments. Um, these two areas, little patches of ground, had not been planted with anything, they'd just been mulched in the last few years. So uh, we decided to put our excess onions and shallots in these two beds. As you saw in the last update, this area was a little bit neglected, but the day before yesterday, it's about seven o'clock in the morning, I started to weed it and I've cleared all the weeds out of here. And we've got the Santero white onion and what we had left of the heat treated red baron. And then just up by the other greenhouse, this is where we put the remainder of the banana shallots and the banana shallots this year germinated really well and I had two packets because last year germination was pretty poor and I thought well I'll have a go with two but I ended up having far too many so uh, we were looking for little corners to put them in and um, again this was cleared but then left for uh, probably a month and so as you can see the effect of competition from weeds and probably less water than the other beds uh, is that you end up with a, a smaller crop. Um, they're all still edible, there are a few largish ones amongst them but most of them are quite tiny but they'll all be eaten. Um, to be fair they were sown a little bit later as well this year. I'll show you the the main bed with the banana shallots and then you'll, you'll get some idea of uh, how the two beds varied. This one as I say neglected a little bit with the leftover uh, shallots that wouldn't fit in the main bed and these are quite small so we'll look at the other bed.
and as you can see on the 10 by 5 bed on the no dig plot the banana shallots the zebra and shallots have done much better they're not all large i would say about 40 percent to 50 percent at a decent size the rest again are a little bit on the small side now typically i sow these zebra and shallots in the first half of march but this year I was a little bit later getting started. I think it was the middle of the last week and that's really shown in the way that the onions have matured. I don't think it's just a question of time that they spend in the ground because they'll, they'll have had two months just like they have in previous seasons but it's probably to do with the quality of light, the length of the days, that kind of thing. Um, so next year these will be sown probably the end of the first week in March and then planted out the first week in May and I think if we do that we'll end up with predominantly larger shallots. I just put my hand at the side they're a decent size most of them a few are really large and a few are quite small. Have a quick look while we're here at the uh, adjacent beds We've got two large beds of carrots this year. Uh, this one on the no dig plot is covered with Enviromesh. The other one isn't because we're planning to eat the other carrots first. Um, and they're doing quite well. We, we're harvesting regularly. Um, just taking out the, you know, the larger topped ones with the larger roots. But I've taken a couple out of here because I keep having a look and they're doing well too. And then to the right, of the zebra and shallots we've got some beetroot and you can see there are one or two going to seed there and that's probably because we've not been picking them as frequently as we should uh, but that's what happens when it's really hot if they're not watered regularly and they reach a certain size then uh, they've got to seed and these are all uh, multi-sown uh, beetroot three or four seeds in a, a, a module and the idea is you take the largest one, you twist it off and you leave the others to grow on. And that's worked successfully in the last few seasons. These onions at the bottom here are actually spring onions and these are really nice. These are called purplet. And again, they were module sown in groups of, as you can see, five or six. And they were beautiful early on. Um, you just took a clump out and they had this... Um, round bulbous base rather than the white Lisbon varieties you know that are just a, a slim straight stalk and the ones that have been left in the ground they've just grown on really nicely um, to form and I guess they'll continue to grow although one here at the side has gone to seed you can just see it there in the corner and there's one at this side as well so there's a limit I guess in terms of how big they're going to grow um, but they, they're all a really nice size and we've been taking them up and putting them in stir fries getting um, anything else that we've been cooking really because they're sweet, they're not too strong and then to the right here we've got a bed that's half full of kohlrabi and half of sweet corn and the variety here is lark it's not the main sweet corn I think we've got about a dozen here we've got about 40 odd on uh, one of the beds on the, the third plot and that's doing okay it's got it tass its tassels and we've got some uh, cobs forming the kohlrabi are doing really well uh, I've taken four or five if I just zoom in you can see they get into the size where they can be taken now and they're all getting on for that size there are a few larger ones there are, yeah, within the next couple of weeks, most of these will be taken up. So, uh, and they're really nice as well. Let's get a little bit closer in the shade so you can see them. They all look healthy and they taste fantastic. So that's the, the top no dig plot. I'm off to have that cup of tea now. I'll catch you later. Morning everyone, welcome back. It's Friday, another sleepless night. So I've come down to the plot early just to uh, take the benefit of the cool winds that blow across the site. Uh, just had a, a 
a slight shower actually so um, hopefully we'll get a little bit of rain later today because the plot certainly needs it but I just thought I'd show you back in the barn and show you where we're at with the onion harvesting and drying and I'm on the right hand side of the barn here and you can see to the left we've got the overwintering shallots that I showed you earlier or it may have been the last episode I can't remember and then just in front of us we've got the caravel pink that we took up and through the hole in the partition wall you can see the main crop shallots as well so we've had a good clear out all the pots have been tidied and they're up off the ground and on a, sh a provisional, we'll call it provisional shelf that we've built up in the rafters. It's just uh, long pieces of timber sparring and um, we've put some boards across it and the pots are up there. We've also got some upturned bread baskets at this side. The idea being that we can uh, get some of the smaller onions up there to dry out and there's space, the space for more baskets as well. Also got baskets down here, ready to take onions. But with the Caraval Pink, as you can see, I've used one of the benches out of the greenhouses. And I made this myself out of um, decking boards. And because I've spaced them, they actually serve really well to put the onions in between. So that's what we've done. Got the elephant garlic at the back there. The stalks have been cut back to about three inch and that's dry enough nicely. But these are the caravel pink and they're all a decent size. Um, I'll just put my hand at the side so you can see the great size again this year. And plenty of those to go at. But we've still got the really large Bedfordshire Champion white onions, the Santero white onions and the red baron and two beds of banana shallots as well. So uh, hopefully we'll make our way through uh, some more of these overwintering shallots and we'll free up some space there. But as I say, we've still got quite a bit of space left to dry off onions at this side. So in due course, probably within the next two weeks, this whole area will be full of onions. The left side, all of the benches here and the extension bits and the shelving above. So that's the barn. I'm just going to show you the beans now on the second plot because I've just spotted that the first French beans are uh, ready to pick. Well these are the Dwarf French Bean Stanley and you can see the drill is lovely now. It's about four foot wide and about two and a half foot high. It's looking very lush and green. And at first sight, it doesn't look as if there's much in the way of action. Not many flowers. Um, looks like, you know, they've, they've not reached uh, fruit bearing stage, but actually they have. The flowers have been for the most part and gone. And this is the time when you need not to rest on your laurels, but to uh, have a peek every now and then. Because as you can see here, there are actually quite a lot of beans that are ready to take and with the hot weather and the need to water and uh, do a little bit of harvesting of other things sometimes you, you forget to uh, check things and you can see that when I pull the leaves back that there, there are beans all over so and they're ready there's certainly uh, a couple of kilos of beans on there that can be picked straight away so that might be uh, one of the jobs for this morning i'm going to call it a day now um, I, will, I was going to show you inside the greenhouses but i think this update is uh, more than long enough we've mainly looked at the uh, the onions and harvesting and storage in the barn but the uh, the season's moving on and our tomatoes are starting to bear fruit as well so we'll maybe take a look at those in the, the next update. Okay thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers!